again and God bless each and every one of you that are looking and listening to this program. It is approaching the holiday season. We just passed Halloween and that's basically something for children. But this holiday season of Thanksgiving and Christmas, we normally think of family coming together and being the best that we can be for each other, united more or less. We just had an election and that was for the country to come together. But even if it doesn't turn out the way we wanted it to, we have to understand that we're not the ones in charge anyway. God is. He knows what's best for us. The one thing I have done is always pray about what I'm going to do. And my former pastor told me, that if ever I have a hard decision to make, I am to just go ahead and back off, pray about it for 72 hours. 72 hours is three days. One day, according to scripture, one day with God is as a thousand years. So how long do I wait and pray about it before I get what it is I want, whether it's the answer I want or whether it's for him to do what I need him to do or what I think I need. Because what I think I need may not be what he has for me. But whatever it is he has for me, we have to know that we should remember to bless him in all things, whether we see it as good, bad, indifferent, so-so, not so good, it's still, blessed be thy name, Lord. Now, this is one of the songs from my original, from my first CD, not my original, because my original was just me, The Dawning of Eve. It was a maxi single, but this was from the first CD, and it's called Blessed Be Thy Name. As long as we remember to bless God in everything, He will bless us by doing whatever we honor and bless Him in. So here we go with Blessed Be Thy Name. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh, blessed be thy name. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh, but blessed be thy name. The Lord giveth, and the Lord take it, but blessed be thy name, oh Lord, oh Lord, blessed be thy name, the Lord give it. And the Lord take it, but say, Blessed be thy name. Whether it's what I want, whether it's what I need, just say, Blessed be thy name. Cause the Lord giveth, it's in his hands, and the Lord taketh, blessed be thy name, oh Lord, oh Lord, blessed be thy name. 
When the pain is hard to bear And tears flow like rain Say blessed be thy name When doors close in your face And no one seems to care Say blessed be thy name When men turn away And you're left all alone Say blessed be thy name Oh Lord, oh Blessed be thy name. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh. Blessed be thy name. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh. Blessed is his name. The Lord giveth, and then the Lord taketh. Blessed be thy name, O Lord, O Blessed be thy name. That's all we have to do. Just remember who to bless, who to rejoice in. Because without him, none of it would be coming to you anyway. You wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him. But because he said live and breathe, we are here. Because he said, you can have it, we've got it. If he turns his back and says, that's it, snaps a finger or bat an eye and say, it's over, you're done. That's exactly what happens. There's nothing we can do about it. It's not left up to us. It's up to God. And the sooner we realize that we are not in control, that he is, then he'll work things out for our good. According to his word, he said that he would let no good thing, no good thing would be cast away from us. No good thing would he deny us. If it was a good thing and we wanted it and asked him for it, and he saw that we were worthy of it, we would get it. It's in his hands. The one thing you have to think about, if you're not getting it, maybe you're not in the place that you're supposed to be to get it. So, reevaluate, resituate yourself, place yourself somewhere else. Don't do the same thing you've always done. When you think about it, try something different. If you've always just given that little five-minute prayer in the morning, but you want something special, try lasting for longer than five minutes. Be more sincere about it, not the same little ritual five lines. Lord, I thank you for this day, for my life, my health, and my strength. I thank you for how you bless me and how you keep me. And Lord, I'm thanking you right now, and I'm asking your blessings on my life. Amen. Excuse me, I think he deserves a little more than that. Or you're on your way to work, so you're going to pray while you're in the car driving. 
the music is on, so you're going to go ahead and say that small little prayer and figure that it's going to be all right. Keep me safe. Keep your hedge of protection around me, Lord. And I thank you for keeping my family and my life, my health, and my strength. No, you want him to do a new thing. You want him to do it for you. Act like you really want it and need it and deserve it. And the only way he's going to think that you really appreciate him for what he can do is if you give him something out of the ordinary, not your usual ritualistic, not your religiosity. Give him all that you can. When you're praying about it, give him a sincere, heartfelt prayer. One that's not just something you thought of and wrote out five minutes. No, and if you've done it before in the car or while you're fixing the breakfast, change that spot. Do it in a more sacred order. He will do a new thing for you, but you've got to do something different for him. Otherwise, he's not going to be doing any more than the same thing for you. When he sees you sacrifice and give him more time, give him time that was not allotted for something else, the job, the, the car, the children, uh, the store. Uh, if you give him some time other than just the time you spend in church, he'll think about it and say, you know what? That's my child. She's really in earnest. She's sincere. She wants this. She needs this. I'm going to fix it for her. Because maybe the thing you're asking for is really not what he sees your need to be, but he will fix it to where what you're asking for will be manifest in a totally different way. Because if you're asking for a job and you're asking for a particular job, that may not be the job that he figures that you are deserving of if you approach him in the right way. This other song is one of uh, my last CD, it's um, You Need to Move. And that basically tells us that, oh yes, there are some things we have to do, most definitely, but we gotta get in position. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen. We've got to move where he is, not where we think he ought to be. If the sun isn't shining where you are, you need to move. And I'm not talking S-U-N, sun. If the sun isn't shining where you are, you need to move, move. If there's darkness all around, if there's light, not be found if no hope or light can be found you need to move <coughs> you need to move in prayer you need to move yes you need to move with fasting you need to move Cause if the sun is 
He'll give you victory. Your danger mom, mom. He'll give you everything you need. Turn and seek his face. Let Jesus take up residence and forget about who's president. Cause if the sun isn't shining where you are, if the sun isn't shining where you are, if he's not shining where you are, you need to move. You need to move. Yeah. You need to move If Jesus Christ isn't shining where you are You need to move, move You need to change your dwelling place You need to turn and seek God's face If the sun isn't shining where you are if the S-O-N isn't shining where you are If Jesus isn't shining where you are You need to move You need to move, 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 move See, it just takes a little bit of more effort on our part And we can reach him he already hears everything we say. He sees everything we do. All we've got to do is be more sincere and give him more of us. Get this natural out of the way. Be more spiritual with him. Be more one-on-one -on -one with him so that he knows you're his child. You're talking to him in language that he understands when you approach him in a more sincere way. Not the same ritual, not the same practice, something different. Move to where he is and he'll give you anything you want. We can think about how the election returns came how we wanted them to be, how the job turned out, and what we thought it was going to be. But do we really want to go that way with him and say, Lord, I, I, when I asked you for the job, I really, he's not listening to that. That is a little bad child talking to another bad child not talking to the Father. You talk to the Father with reverence, honor, and respect, sincerity, and he will actually hear what you're talking about and be able to work it out for you, even though what you thought wasn't the right thing as far as a job in the right place after you got to it, that really wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I expected and I wanted and they advertised. And when they told me I had the job, I just knew it was going to be. Or when they said I was going to have that place, I just knew it was going to be the one I had looked at or the one just like I saw. Did you ask the Lord about, Lord, is this where I'm supposed to be? Is it going to keep me? with my mind able to reach you whenever I need to? Or am I going to be constantly talking to you about, I need some more money because I don't have enough. I can't pay for this and I can't pay for that. And I need to have this and I need to have, and the children need. He's not wanting to hear your needs. He knows your needs already. He wants you. All you've got to do is move to where he is. In a frame of mind of where he is. Not in the same ritualistic place that you've always met him. Because he knows 
You could meet him at church, sure. But is that giving him all of you? There was a song once that uh, used to be sung all the time, and it was called All of Me. All of me. That's all he wants is all of you. And the only reason why I can talk about it so much is because I had to realize this same thing not even two weeks ago, not even one week ago. You want to try for just this week? I had to realize this same thing. I could not just give him a little babbled prayer and expect for it to happen. Because, Lord, I asked you, could I get, could you have, and I want it, and you said you wouldn't deny me any good thing, and I, that's all I asked you for. No. He asked us to live for him, to obey his will, to yield to what he wants of us. Yield our human lifestyle. He asked it of his only son. Why do you think he wouldn't ask it of us? We're no more than his son. He only had the one. And he asked him for everything. Give him a body that he could be here in. And still he asked for that body. Turned his back until he was done doing what his father asked him to do, which was sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. And we will get. His son is now reigning with him. Whatever we want, we can have as long as we sacrifice for him. Sacrifice to him. So now, until next month, I think it's going to be a little bit better for me. Hopefully it'll be better for you. Because my time will be more of a sacrificial not a ritual. My prayer will be more sincere, not the written five or six lines twice a day. It can be all day, because as long as I've got my mind on him, nothing else is going to matter. I will be able to overcome Everything that is not in my favor, it will work out because he will be more in me and projecting more in me. So naturally, it's not going to go against me. So until next month, here's hoping your time will go better for you as well. All right? And I look forward to being able to speak with you again on next month. Until then, remember, blessed be his name. Rejoice and thank him for everything. And move to where he is. Don't stay in the same spot. Okay? All righty. See you next month.
What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network.